What's up? I'm going to swing it to you next. Who will finish as the number one seed in the Western Conference? So as it plays out right now, like I said before, this is only this is this afternoon, so none of the games that happen today count into the record. We have the Timberwolves and the Nuggets tied for number one at 26 and 11. We have the Nuggets at second at 26 and 13. Clippers at four at 24 and 13. Kings at five at 23 and 14. And Pelicans at six with 23 and 15. So they're all literally three games oh, apart. Totally so yeah. who right now, January 12th, who will finish as the number one seed in the Western Conference here? Me just guessing as a fan, just saying right here, looking at this right here, I think I'm going to put my money on the OKC getting the number one seed. And I think the reason why I'm going OKC to get the number one seed, you know, I would love for my Sacramento Kings to get the number one seed on being four games back, looking at the standings right now. But, you know, it's going to be pretty tough. Obviously, you know, we're up and down team at the moment, you know, call it how you see it, so... The, so that's not really going to be in the wishes. So a real three, the real four teams, I feel like really right. I mean, I guess Pelicans can get on a run, maybe good chase for. It, but like I think the four teams you mentioned, Minnesota, OKC, Denver, and Clippers. Now Clippers, I just don't think they can get the one seed, which would be great for them. But I just don't feel like they're going to be prioritizing the one seed over rest towards the end of the year. So that's going to make them slip. Minnesota, they're five and five in the last ten. People are starting a little bit of figuring them out, but I still play, you know, Anthony Edwards and them are still great. But I just have a feeling, and also Denver Nuggets, again, kind of like on the Clippers side of my thinking, where I just feel like they're going to be, we're the champions. We could do it home or away, as long as, you know, we're going to be the champions. We're all good here. We're going to, no matter, we're, number one seed's not a high priority. We would love to get it, but it's not a high priority. I feel like the two young teams who are going to be battling out for the number one seed are just going to be the Timberwolves and OKC if everyone stays healthy. I think OKC will nip it, tuck it forward at the end because they're just a team that has a lot of energy night to night. They're playing hard every single possession. Not to say Timberwolves are not, but I just feel like they just got that it factor with them. Again, that's me not saying the Timberwolves don't. This is a team that's both young. They're both going neck and neck. They got both got dogs on their team with Anthony Edwards and Shea Gillis Alexander going at it. So it's going to be a tough one. I'm just going to put my money on OKC just because I feel like they're just going to to be a little more clutchy at the, at the end to get that uh, number one seed in. Man, OKC back and rocking for the playoffs like back in the day. You see when they had Kevin Durant, Westbrook, and Harden going crazy in those in those crowds. We're just kind of remember our Sacramento Kings crowds when we first spoke into the playoffs. So it's going to be a, little, a great scene to see when they get their home court advantage if they can keep it rolling. But right. we beat the price, though. We got, they got the multiple losses to us as Kings. So it's a good little, good little jab we got on them. All right, Toddy, I'm going to bring it to you next. Who will finish at the number one seed in the Western Conference today, January 12th? Um, I did foreshadow it kind of in the earlier in the show. Um, OKC Thunder, I, I kind of gave a little spiel about Shea Gillis Alexander. He's like the one or two seed around that. Kind of going from playing. I think they, they missed the play-in last year, and we kind of were all thinking Chet Holmgren was going to play in that game. That would have been like his season or career debut, but, you know, he warmed up and he never really, you know, fell through. But um, OKC was – they had a chance to win that game late in that playing game last year, um, but kind of fell short. I think Shea has taken a gigantic leap. Last year um, he was first team All-NBA. Um, so that was kind of foreshadowing that he's probably like a top eight player in the league <laughs> already. And, you know, currently right now they're sitting at second. Um, so they're they're like a half a game behind um, the Wolves currently right now. I think they're a better team than the Wolves. So I would have to give the edge to OKC. My second team, who I'm going to – I'm going to say the Clippers will get up there and contend for the number one seed as well based off of how well Paul George, Kawhi, and James Harden have been playing. Um, now in a seven-game series, if, you know, the Thunder and Clippers – probably played against each other. I would lean towards the Clippers, um, but that's another story for another day. Um, but as far as the regular season goes, I'm going to say OKC will probably um, get to the number one seed just based off how well their team is playing. You got three guys, Chet Holmgren, uh, Jalen Williams, and Shea Gillis, Alexander, who can score, you know, kind of get their own shot. And they're all like under 25 years old, which is the scariest part. 
Um, I think Chet's like what, 20 years old. Jalen Williams is like 21. Shea's like 24. Um, and Shea's, you know, probably going to get a $400 million max contract when it's, you know, his time kind of coming up. I think that's next year. Um, he'll have all stars, all NBAs on that th- on that list, maybe even an MVP to add um, on his, you know, very young resume. So big um, bag. The, the Yes, the big bag will be coming very, very shortly, too. So I don't know if the Clippers could have seen this coming from him, from what he was as a rookie in L.A., um, you know, trying to just grow and develop as a young player. You saw a glimpse of it in that playoff run when they were playing against, you know, the KD Warriors, and, like, they took them to six games. They're like, yeah, that, that guy can – he can play a little bit. Um, when they had – it was Lou Williams, Montrez, and – those guys on that team. I think Batum was on that team too or something like that. But um, uh, him getting traded to OKC and being able to play with, you know, Chris Paul very young. And I think even on that, he's kind of been like around the playoffs a little bit. If you kind of think about his career, um, being in L.A. and then going to um, OKC, where he started to play with a Chris Paul they kind of saw what it was like, you know, earlier, but um, for him to kind of have his own team now and have those, you know, those values kind of instilled in him, he's kind of molded it into an MVP like top five ish player in the league. And like I said, he's, I think he's only uh, 24 years old. So the sky's the limit for this guy and the OKC Thunder team who have how many picks it is, Kevin, in the next however many drafts is like, Way too many. 50 picks, something like insane. So they got a lot of ammo. So if they want to go out and get a star player, they can and just use a shit ton of picks on somebody. That is still very possible as well. You know, when I was typing this out and trying to figure out who I was going to go with, I think it's, it's yes, you want to go OKC, but they're a young team. So when they have 10 guys shooting over 40% from three, I don't know if that's going to really be able to stand still. We talked about Jalen Williams. Is he going to be able to be a consistent third guy? So for my number one team in the Western Conference, I have to go to the Los Angeles Clippers just because okay. we've seen nine no, square. We've seen nine where James Harden goes up for 35 points, 13 assists, and nine rebounds. Then we see nine where he scores nine points, 15 assists. And they're really – they're making sure that every night they're going through Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Russell Westbrook and James Harden are getting the scraps. Ivan Subac is dominating. He is going he in is. there and dying in night out and doing his thing, holding it down for them. They traded for uh, the old Celtic. Uh, damn, what's his name? Daniel Tice. Ah, Daniel Tice, yes. He's coming in playing huge minutes, kind of playing the, the Mason Plumley role from last season or Miles, one of the Plumley brothers. But just having that dominant bench – Having a backup center that's going to be dominant. You know, you have the scores. You have Russell Westbrook coming off the bench who can give you a triple double at any moment. So, and they have a championship coach. So, when it comes down to number one seed, I looked at the Clippers or like the Thunder. I looked at coaching. Who's been there before? Who knows what it looks like to be at the top of a mountaintop? And with that being said, it has to be the Los Angeles Clippers for me. 